saw, um, we saw you on social networking with uh, Eubank Jr., mm. uh, a couple other people as well, actors, Dizzy Rascal, chilling in Miami. Mm. Um, is, is Eubank Jr.'s path at the moment one that you're watching in terms of obviously they've got their deal with ITV, pay-per-view, mm. um, that's thrown a spanner in the works for a lot of other promoters and stuff, opened it up for people like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it, are those the type of fighters that you're looking at? Well, you, you Bank Jr. I believe is one of the best British um, fighters who doesn't currently have a world title. You know, you look at his fight against Billy Joe Saunders, you know, I, I personally thought he won the fight. You know, he, he didn't win the fight, but other than that, he hasn't, he hasn't put a foot wrong. Yeah. And um, ta tactically, uh, technically, um, his father, I had a good chat with his father a couple of days ago, he gave me some pearls of wisdom, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he does that. You know, he did, mm -hmm. listen, Chris Eubank Sr., he knows his stuff, he really does know his stuff, and uh, yeah, I, I believe he's, he's got a plan for his son, and they're going full, uh, full force ahead of it with their own thing, they're, they're doing it their own way. I wish them nothing but, nothing but, nothing but luck and yeah. nothing but success in what they do, because he is, you know, for me, he's a, he's a great fighter who will, I think he's the only guy who can really have a chance to beat uh, uh, Golovkin Triple G. I believe he's the only guy, so I think the British public should get behind him, support him, and assist him to whatever platform he fights on, we need to get behind it. What do you make of the backlash they've experienced? Who's this? That the Eubanks, I mean, from the, the Eubanks, is it just a normal path it's of the, the course? It's, it's that, part, it's an, I've yeah. had exactly the same thing. Right. Whenever a fighter takes his own path and doesn't sign with one of the mm. big established um, British promoters, he's considered, you know, oh, he's, he doesn't know what he's doing, you know. I've had the same thing, I've never really signed with one of the big promoters in a long-term deal. And everyone said, at every stage, oh, he's never going to make it, he's going to fall, this ain't going to happen, you, the, the judges ain't going to score you. I've done it my own way the whole time. And if you can fight and if you can back it up, you can do it. It's, as long as you win the fights, it, it, everything falls into place. If I wasn't, if I was half as good as I was, and I needed some assistance and I needed this, I might not have made it. But if, you, if you're the real deal, if you can fight and win well, if you're world class, you will make it regardless of what network you're fighting on, who's your manager, who's your promoter, who's your, your, your matchmaker. It, it doesn't matter. In the ring, fights are won, and that's it. And Eubank Jr., I believe, does his fighting in the ring, and all of the pieces of the puzzle will come together, and people will probably celebrate, celebrate his independent move rather than uh, Put it down. Yeah. In regards to time frame, what are we what are we looking like in regards to you announcing signings or fights in regards to broadcast there and then your first show? When when are we looking at stuff like that? Um, before before this before my next fight, we should uh, have some solid signings. We should have some solid signings with some good young good young prospects. Um, Richard's obviously uh, going back to uh, the states this weekend. We're gonna we're gonna regroup again in Las Vegas at the end of the month. He's promoting three world title fights yeah. um, in, in Las Vegas, yeah. um, Carl Frampton and Santa Cruz rematch. Um, so <clears throat> it's exciting times ahead, and we've obviously got a few more meetings with a few fighters over there in the States. So the next couple of weeks, you'll be hearing some good news on in terms of television network and fighters signed. How are you dealing with this? You've got a big fight coming up, mm. but then you've got all this news coming out. You mm -hmm. work with, obviously, Richard Schaefer as well, looking at signing fighters. Mm broadcasting and your fight. How it's, are you dealing with it's, this? It's, no, it's nothing new for me. I've always promoted my own fights. I've always, you know, I'm used to juggling a lot of things. Um, as I've got older, I've realized time management and how to how to structure my training, my, my day to get the quality training, get the quality rest. And if there's business to do, I, I, I manage to have a, have a, have a time to, to slot that in. So time management is really important. In the past, I've kind of messed it up. I've done too much business and not enough training, or okay. too much training and not enough business. I've, I've, I've figured out a way now, <coughs> as I get older, to get the most out of my day, where I, I don't schedule too many meetings in the same day, maybe one or two one, in, in, in one day, and I do, I do the rest the next day. So it's time management, but don't think I'm taking this next fight uh, not 100% seriously, because you know, any fighter on any given day, you know, can uh, slip on a banana skin, you know, and I'm, I've learned that lesson in the past, overlooking my opponent. I remember in 2004, when I was fighting Carl Thompson, you know, I didn't give him the respect he was due. You know, I was, I was younger, faster, probably punched a little harder. I was younger, I had, I had all the advantages in my, in my place, but the one thing I didn't focus on is, is punishing myself in training, is okay. putting the hard work in behind the scenes. And I, I got my time management mixed up there. I got it wrong, 
and I wasn't in condition to put myself in a tough fight that I was in. So that lesson was learned then, so it's not gonna come back to bite me in the bum again.